All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And the reason we're here today, guys, is I get a lot of questions about a topic, which is, can you make colored engravings on stainless steel with a diode laser? The short answer is yes. But guys, we've all saw the marketing video showing how easy it is to just pick colors and you can just randomly engrave colors on material. And a lot of people have the misconception that it's easy and that you could do it with consistency. So today I wanna to do a video and just kinda of show you the process, how you can go about doing it, and just, you know, so you know I'm not bluffing. It is possible, but we're gonna go over it and give you a little better understanding of how it's done, the process is involved, and how totally unpredictable it really is. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so obviously this one I chose to be the project for the video because I wanted to show you guys that it is possible <clears throat> to get different colors, set those layers, and have those layers turn out different colors. Now, being able to pick the color, for instance, this blue that's in the middle of the logo, I had to do two passes to get the blue. Even after I had done all this testing, on this particular plate of uh, stainless steel to try to find the settings. And for you guys that have the F1 Ultra, that's the machine that we're using in today's video. And the reason I'm using the F1 Ultra, it's not that I use the fiber, I'm using the blue diode, but it is a 20 watt blue diode, okay? All the rest of my machines are actually a little more than 20 watts. And so this machine was really easy to do this with. Also doing the multi-layered engrave, the Galvo style machines, tend to do a good job if you need to go back over that. So I chose the X-Tool F1 Ultra today for the testing. But guys, this was the final product, okay? I was doing testing last night as well as today, this afternoon, to come up with this result and make it look this good. Now, we've all seen the commercials, we've all seen the videos of, of this. And if all I showed you guys was this right here, you would probably be running out right now to go buy a laser thinking that you're going to be able to do this on any material and just at the push of a button. It's not the case, guys. So I'm here to kind of clear the air on this. This is a topic that comes up a lot in our Sunday Night Live videos with me and Steve over at Ventari's Workshop. And if you're not checking those out, please stop in Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Central. Steve and I have a live forum where we answer questions for folks. Uh, we actually have fixed machines during the live, diagnosed issues for folks. It is a community of folks, of like-minded folks, that we, we're all working together for the same cause. And we also have a Facebook group that is associated with that that's called Laser Engraving Community on Facebook. So if you do Facebook, it's a good place to post pictures and ask questions and, and get advice. So go check those out. I will put links in the description down below if you want to use those links and go check out the community and the lives. It'd be great. And we'll look forward to seeing you there. So the trick with getting colors in metals, guys, is it involves a lot of heat. And you see the videos and you see the different things. To do this process, you're going to need to make sure you have a fairly thick piece of stainless steel. Using this color stuff, unless you've got a you know, three millimeter, two millimeter, a, a somewhat thick piece of uh, stainless steel, such as a knife blade, or maybe a, you know, some of the utility things for your grill, things like that. Those are where this actually could be usable. Now, don't be getting it in your head that you're gonna be able to find the settings and it's always gonna be blue. You know, the setting's always gonna be blue. It's not gonna happen. There's a lot of factors and we're gonna go over that more. But these are some of the test grids that I did on some thin, this is some really thin uh, stainless steel that X-Tool sends you. And you'll notice that it totally, totally warped these little pieces up. And that's because of the heat that is required to get these colors. Now, I'm no scientist, guys. I did do a little research before telling you this to make sure I was being uh, as, as accurate as possible. But the process in which stainless steel changes into the different colors involves a layer of the material on stainless steel that keeps it from rusting. Basically what you're doing in a nutshell 
is when you heat up the material, the material gets hot as it does. A thin layer of oxidation occurs just below the surface of the material. And that oxidation, as, as it gets thicker and thicker, it goes from like a gray over to like an orangish red, blue. And then eventually, if you get it hot enough, it'll actually turn black or either disappear. And I'm going to show you right here. This is what I'm talking about. This is with a propane torch heating the corner of the material, and you will actually see how the hotter areas react differently than the areas in the boundaries of, of the flame, and that changes different colors. So this is the piece of material that I did that with. And you can see there's a pattern that is associated directly with the flame. And so I got these nice blues. I will tell you from my experience and from my practicing, blue seems to be the easiest color to get because there's a really wide range where you'll get anywhere from a light blue to the darker blue. And that's what I did on this engrave. If you'll look here, uh, the outer ring right here, I turned the heat up a little more and got a darker blue here, but I got the light blue in the center. And I even turned the power down a little bit less and kind of gave me this little graying area in the middle right there. So this is three, actually this is four because I did one more pass on the outside with a lot more power to give it that gray, almost black finish right there. So this is four different power settings on this piece of material and guys, this is thick, okay? This is, this is as thick as, I would say, a machete blade. So that's the reason I chose that piece to be the thumbnail and to be the, the piece that I showed you guys of what you actually can do. But the material is gonna have to be thick enough to withstand the heat that you're gonna be generating with the laser. If you're messing with stainless steel things, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Lasers do it basically because you have that focused beam of light hitting that material. But if the material is too thin, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna start causing the material to contract. It's gonna, and it, when it does, it's gonna warp it, it's gonna bend it, and it's gonna deform whatever it is. Now, with materials that are thicker, such as like these stainless steel dog tags. Now I will tell you, stainless steel dog tags, if they have like this nickel coating on them that makes them look almost chrome, it actually makes it resistant to doing the color. So you're gonna want them to be actually just blank stainless steel with no covering or anything like that on them. That would be my recommendation. But knives, uh, kitchen utensils that are actually stainless steel that are thick enough. Uh, if you have a black stone or a grilling kit and those, you know, the, the things that you use are stainless steel, that's where you can use this. And if you use a machine such as uh, the F1 Ultra, to where you can place the item, run the power setting, and then look at the result. And I'll, I'll kind of give you a little cheat code here on how to get that blue. You're gonna to wanna, to, first of all, you're gonna to wanna to start out kind of low with the power settings. And when you do start out kind of low with the power settings, you'll see this kind of smoked color right here. It's like a light brown, orangish color, okay? That is more or less, it getting it hot, it's starting to have that oxidation, but you're not quite hot enough. Let that pass run. It's not gonna hurt anything. Let that layer finish and then bump your power up. If you're using the X-Tool F1 20 watt and most 20 watt lasers, if, if you'll bump your power up, let's say uh, uh, 10%, bump the power up 10%, rerun it, and then at that time, you could start getting into the, the more of the orange or the blues. Now. It's not gonna be a perfect science, guys. Like I said, a lot of variables come into play because one, the thicker the material, the more heat that the overall piece of material can absorb. The more heat that the material absorbs, the less the heat's gonna build up on the surface. So smaller items with thinner build are gonna heat up quicker than a, a larger item. You know, stainless steel is relatively good at transferring the heat out to the edges of the material. So as the material gets thicker or the material gets bigger, you're gonna to have to increase the, the heat, which means you're gonna to have to slow it down or increase your output power. Same token, if you're in Miami and you're doing this in a garage with no air conditioning, your results are gonna vary than if you were in Vancouver doing it out on a picnic table. So the, it's gonna be different because temperature is gonna affect the, uh, the rapid dissipation of the heat, 
the temperature of the metal when you start, all of those things are variables. So guys, with diode lasers, if somebody tells you that you can 100% every time, no matter what the item, get a specific color, tell them to show you because I haven't been able to do that. I can tell you that between this range and this range on this piece of material, you're gonna get those colors. The thicker materials, if you'll stick with those, knife blades uh, or anything thick, you know, if it's, a, if it's an automotive part that's made out of stainless steel or a part for your boat that's made out of stainless steel and it's thick enough to take the heat, absolutely do it. Run it one time. If it's not blue, you know, just watch the colors. And as you start seeing that gray to that brown, then watch for the blue. 10% increments and you can get there. So next time you watch a video of somebody showing you how they do color with these very old lasers, pay attention to how thick the material is. Even I, I went around and kind of cruised the internet. I did a little research at some of the marketing materials for some of the many lasers that, that, that boast that you can do color engraving on stainless steel. And you'll notice that they're always using a thicker piece of material. It's never gonna be these little thin things right here unless they're only going for uh, using the fiber because the fiber will mark these, basically engrave these. Uh, but if you're trying to do it with a blue diode, the thinner materials are gonna be a bit of a problem due to the, the thermal characteristics of the piece. But guys, that's the truth about making color engraves with diode lasers. Can it be done? Yes. Is it very material dependent? Yes. And is it always going to be, you know, a specific color? Is this one of those things that speed and power tests are going to always be correct on? No. Uh, like I said, the temperature of the material, whether you have air assist, whether you have your uh, ext air extraction on, all those things are going to play into it. So, Feel free to play around, guys, and if you can get your hands on a, on a thicker piece of stainless steel, it's fun to do. Until next time, guys, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and keep in mind, Sunday night, 7 o'clock p.m., come check out Steve and I's live, and we'll answer any questions or just carry on a conversation, whichever. You guys bring the content, you bring the questions, we answer the questions. You don't bring questions, we're going to talk about the weather and what we eat and make fun of each other, but it'll be a good time regardless. So until next time, be safe and have a good day.